And uh, so you um, initially attended that USA Memory Championship as a journalist. You were right. thinking about writing about it? I, or you just went? I was there to write a very short story about what I figured was going to be a bunch of people with like photographic memory or, yeah. or savants. I didn't know. And it had nothing to do with photograph photographic memories, right? No, these people all told me they had average memories and that they had trained themselves to perform these amazing feats of memory. Right. Uh, and I was like, I don't, I don't even believe you. That's just, <laughs> it sounds impossible. <laughs> but you studied them, they worked with you, and uh, one of them took you on as his, uh, as his student. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was outside the competition hall, the guy was smoking a cigarette, and he says to me, do you know Britney Spears? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Britney Spears. He said, because I really want to teach Britney Spears how to memorize a deck of playing cards. It'll prove that anybody can do it. Oh. And I was like, okay. That's not very nice. No, it wasn't. Nice. That wasn't very nice at all. I said, but you know, maybe you could teach me. You gotta start, you gotta start somewhere. You wanna know something? I bet Britney Spears could do it. She too. could do it. Anybody could do it. That's what I learned. Okay. So, uh, so in one year, you went back yes. uh, and, uh, as a contestant and yes. won. Right. Which were, you, were you very pleased? You must have been. That wasn't really supposed to happen. Yeah. I was there, I mean, as kind of an experiment in right. participatory journalism. Yeah. Uh, I had spent a year training my memory, but also trying to understand it, why it works, why it sometimes doesn't you work. You were probably very, very competitive. It, I got into there. it at the yes, end, you know? I bet you did. Uh, so what happens at the USA Memory Championship? I mean, I have never gone to it. I wish I could go just observe it. It was yesterday, right? It was uh, on Saturday. Oh, on Saturday. Yeah, it was really dramatic. It's, yeah. um, there are several events. One of them is memorizing a poem. One this year's champion is pretty handsome. He's a man. That guy. He's climbing Mount Everest boy, in two oh months. Boy, look at him. They're on the. He's he's the guy on the left. No, wait a minute. He's the guy on the right. No, <laughs> no, you're you're handsome too. Thank but you. this guy, he's sort of like a <laughs> macho man. He's going to climb Mount Everest. Yeah. For what? Uh, actually, to raise money for Alzheimer's. He might lose his mind up there. Well, let's let's <laughs> let's just hope he comes back safe. Yes, yes, it's a it's a tough a tough climb. Yeah. So um so this is this book is also a study of memory and the history of the memory techniques. Right. So when do they start? When do people start using techniques to develop memory? This was the fascinating thing that I had no idea about. Uh, these techniques were invented in ancient Greece and were once widely known. People used to invest in their memories and cultivate their memories. Well, they had no, they, they, they didn't have printing presses. They didn't have okay. printing presses. They didn't have television. Right. They didn't have uh, really any, they had no internet. They had nothing, no way to communicate except by memorizing giant volumes of information that had been passed down and passed down, and also storytelling, right? Can you imagine life before an iPhone? I huh? mean, it's... Yeah, I can, and <laughs> I wish. You don't know how yeah. much I wish. Just this morning, I was thinking about that. Oh, well, that's another subject. <laughs> about how, how, our, how we've really kind of destroyed ourselves with all this technology. Well, you know, we, what we've done is we've outsourced yes. the role of memory. memory to technology. And it's right. an old story. It goes back, as you say, to the beginning of writing. I mean, who, who was going to teach the Hippocratic Oath to anybody? They, they were, it wasn't written down. It had to be written down. <laughs> it, it had to be spoken. Was, sure, anything that was going to be transmitted had to be transmitted right. through memory. Right. Well, have you found these techniques useful? Uh, yeah, in real, you know, in real life. I'll tell you, I, I use them to remember my shopping list. Uh, I wish somebody had taught me them in high school. The person who actually uses them most in my family right now is my wife, who's here, uh, who's a student at Yale Med School. Uh, Welcome, Dinah. Nice to have you. So, are you are you using it for for your studies in medical school? I do. I use them. They're not applicable to everything, like any study technique, but I definitely use them to help me study, to remember hard to organize information, like uh, cell signaling pathways or embryology, things like that. Yeah, well, good. Yeah. That's excellent. All sorts of stuff that's over my head. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you taught her how to do it. Well, the, the basic idea, yeah. But then... So you read the book. <laughs> I've, I've read the book over the past several years, yes. <laughs> I bet. It's great. Well, good luck with your medical studies. Thank you so Good. Much. Have you chosen a field? Not yet. I'm oh. only in the second year, oh, so okay. a little while. So, um, so you also write about um, our memories and how they define uh, our actions without us realizing it. How's that? Our memories are the essence of who we are. And we talk about it sometimes as though our memories were like this vault that we drop information into and pull information out of. But it's, it's actually not the way it is. Our, our memories are always there shaping how we perceive the world, how we move through the world, the decisions we make in it. And that's part of the reason why, you know, it's... It, sort of important that we invest in them. Well, your brother Jonathan, he must have some memory because, or, or at least a memory of what he reads and, is, and takes in because then he 
rates it in such a fabulous prose. <laughs> That's very kind of you to say. I, what, I, Don't you think? I think so. I mean, yeah. I, per, I, I mean, have this problem for, where I read books and I forget them But for a right young away. man to have such historical perspective in mm. many of his uh, writings, uh -huh. Uh, I always I always admire that so much in any author yeah. uh, that that can really like draw on a vast vo vast amount of information. Yeah. So that is so. We what are some of the techniques that okay. we should know? Can well, so you uh, one of them that goes back to ancient Greece is a technique called the memory palace, and the idea is to essentially transform a building, like could be your house, could be your apartment. How many apples? That would not be one that we could we could use a memory <laughs> technique for. That's one we would need to call in the Rain Man for. Oh. Uh, uh, you transform your build your uh, a house in in your mind's eye, and you use it to store images of whatever oh. it is you want to remember. So, so there's my front porch. Right there's Sharky. Yep, and now I'm going to go shopping. Okay, you're going shopping. So let's say you have to remember to pick up the cat food. You would see the cat food right at the you know the base of your your front steps, and maybe then, there's a cat there. Um, yeah, and I, actually, ideally, the, the more colorfully, strangely, bizarrely you see that cat, the more likely it is you'll remember it. And I guess you've got some tomatoes up at the front door. I must be buying tomatoes. I think they're singing, so they're probably very happy. <laughs> uh, and and you would go through your house imagining your shopping list. And that's actually how I remember my shopping list when I go shopping now, just to try and keep happy in shape. Happy tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and what else? I mean... Well, that's a good one. I mean, yeah. the, basically... That other, what was that other object on the stairs? I, I, I couldn't oh, even make okay. that out. That was some... <laughs> was that Humpty Dumpty sitting on your stairs? It looks like that. Maybe eggs, huh? Yeah, okay, so eggs. Yeah. Right, and actually, if you remembered Humpty Dumpty, that would be a good way to remember that you have to pick up eggs. The idea is, anything that's colorful, that's beautiful, that's ugly, that's strange, is more likely to stick in your memory. And then so, three tomatoes. Then three tomatoes, exactly. <laughs> Well, thanks to Penguin Press, everyone in the audience is going home with a copy of uh, Moonwalking with Einstein. Joshua, thank you very much. Good luck with the book. And I look forward to remembering more. <laughs>